Hello world and welcome back to the HasD channel. I'm HasD and this is my slightly delayed next let's play of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone for the PS1. Some of you guys might know this game from memes because unfortunately this game hasn't exactly aged well in some regards and people find it quite funny nowadays looking back at this old game and going wow that's certainly a game. But I still love it, I love this game to bits, it's very, very steeped in nostalgia. I played this a ton as a child, so I can overlook it and still enjoy it despite that. People who haven't played it probably see it more as a joke, but I, I love this game. I'll get more into it once we actually get in there and I can actually explain with visuals why this game is such a meme. Um, some of you might also ask why am I playing the PS1 version instead of the PC version. A lot of people say that is the superior version. It's basically because nostalgia... And yeah, nostalgia, that's basically it. But anyway, all of that pre-ramble aside, let's jump right in and start the game. So, let's hope this works, because I've had problems with my memory card. Yes, it's working. So, I tried to do a recording of this before. The memory card didn't want to work, and then I did another recording where it was working, and then just the entire recording just disintegrated or something. I don't know, it just disappeared. So I'm having to re-record this, so that's why I've got a couple of saves already. So let's just begin a new game over this first save and jump right in. So after this loading screen, there's going to be an opening cutscene, so I'm going to shut up and just let you guys enjoy it. There was nothing about the starry sky that night to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon be happening. As unsuspecting muggles slept, a huge motorbike with a giant astride it tumbled down from the darkness. The giant, named Hagrid, left a blanket-wrapped bundle on the doorstep of number four, Privet Drive. Nestled in the bundle was a baby, Harry Potter, the boy who lived. For the next 11 years, Harry lived with his dreadful step-parents, the Dursleys. Until that fateful day, when he received the letter inviting him to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Hagrid took Harry to Diagon Alley to purchase a most unusual list of school supplies. Soon after, Harry caught the Hogwarts Express from Platform 9 and 3 quarters and left the Muggle world far behind. Harry sat beneath the sorting hat hoping that he would not be chosen for Slytherin House over Gryffindor. Not Slytherin, eh? said the hat in his ear. You could be great. It's all here in your head, and Slytherin will help you on your way to greatness. No? Well, if you're sure, better be Gryffindor! So there we go for that one person living under a rock in a cave on the moon who doesn't know the opening, like the first act to Harry Potter. There you go, that is how it goes, that is the story, and oh my goodness, I think you guys can start to see what I was talking about when I did my intro. I'm going to have to explain it in a moment, because I'm going to get cut off by a bit of dialogue here, so I'm going to shut up and not talk over it, so hello there. Welcome to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I am Albus Dumbledore, your headmaster. Now, Hogwarts is full of secrets, Harry. So, search behind every door, but keep in mind, not all secrets are rewarding. Oh, um, which reminds me, uh, the third floor corridor is out of bounds to everyone who does not wish to suffer the most painful death. I always find that one of the weirdest ways to open the school year in this book is that Dumbledore's basically like, hello 11 year olds, welcome to a school of magic, witches and wizardry, you're going to have a great time here, but also, you might die, so watch out, that's a bad time. I just find it such a- Nitwit, blubber, oddment, tweak, four wonderful words, don't you think? I was going to say, such a weird thing to say, but then he says that, which honestly, he could have said either and they're just about as equally as weird for him to say, but yeah, anyway- so that's going to happen fairly often in this game, like characters are going to interrupt me while I'm talking. I'm trying to avoid it as much as possible because like sometimes you just walk too close to a character and they will just start talking to you without you actually, actually prompting them to do so. They will just talk to you. I'm going to try and avoid it as much as possible so I don't interrupt and talk over them or interrupt myself for him to stop. 
I'm going to try and avoid that as much as possible, but it's going to happen regardless. Anyway, on a different point, let's have a look at this game, because I'm sure you guys have already noticed and realised why this game is a bit of a meme. It's because the graphics haven't exactly aged particularly well, let's just say that. Like, the models are very low poly, the textures are very like low quality like they're trying to have more detail than is actually possible technically so at this point in time you'll find like games like Final Fantasy which has all like big flat pre-rendered textures or there will be models that have low detail but normally big ca like cartoony characteristics this game has tried to do like proper portions on characters well I say proper proportions you'll you'll see in a bit what I mean why I'm laughing about that but yeah, so they're trying to do way more detail than is technically possible given the technology and the time. So, as a result, it looks a bit janky. Even at the time, it looked a bit off. And the reviews for the graphics for this game weren't exactly spectacular, let's call it that. But the thing is, I don't mind too much because, I, as I said, I played this game so much as a kid that when I come back and see it again, it's such a blast of nostalgia and I just love having a bit of fun with it just being like wow look at this game I love this game as a kid but wow it's just a bit I just love it I love it for an endearing reason it's so bad that it's good and I love it so I can kind of overlook the graphics and just find it fantastic and just part of the experience now it's part of the experience for me but yeah now that I've talked about that I also want to briefly mention right at the beginning here like I said in the intro there are other versions of this game they're all completely different to this game. So I mentioned a lot of people think the PC version is way better than this. I'm pretty certain there's a couple of others, like one that is like a puzzle game or something that's completely different, and then there's a few others for different platforms. It's I'm not going to go over all of them here because we'll be here for another 30 minutes, and this video is already going to be really, really long because this is the episode where I have to talk about all of the tutorial stuff, and there's going to be a bunch of characters talking at us for like minutes of this video in which they're just explaining tutorial stuff. So I'm going to try and whiz through this as fast as possible. I know it doesn't look like that considering I'm standing still, just rambling away, but I've got to get this pre-ramble out before I start explaining things. So, <laughs> like I just said, before I start explaining things, even though the pre-ramble is me explaining. Never mind, I'm just, I'm just going mad now. I'm going mad from over-explaining. I'm doing what Hasdi does best, and that's explain things at excessive length. So here we go, first bit of tutorial. So, if you press square next to a character, or at least some of the characters, you can talk to them like this. Ah, Hoggy Watty Hogwarts. Oh, wonderful place to explore. So I'll get onto what he was talking about just there in a second, but I just want to demonstrate if you're talking to someone, and you press square, ah, and then press square what? again, you can cancel out their bit of dialogue. So ah, as you can see, ho if you don't want to be talking to someone in this game, you can press square, cancel out the dialogue. This can happen if you accidentally press square too many times trying to get a bit of information from someone and you're just like, I don't want to actually talk to you, shut up. I'm going to be honest, based on like some recent events, that would have been really, really lovely to have when some people were talking at you. You could just press a button and walk away and it not be rude. That'd be fantastic. It's the rudest thing you could ever do, but everyone, I am guaranteeing everyone has wanted to have a button like that. At some point in their life, they're like, I really don't want to be talking to you, square button, leave. But yeah, so you can cancel out talking. That is very useful because that is going to happen several times. Otherwise, or you'll get into a tutorial that you just don't want to bother listening to because you know how to play games and you just want to cancel it out. Anyway, as he was saying in that last bit of dialogue, if you explore around, there is things to find. So over here, you can see a door. This is the door to the Great Hall, but you can also see that it's locked. So with that padlock on there, I can't go in. I can't enter it. No go? I don't know why I'm explaining locked doors to you. I'm pretty certain if you've ever played a game in your life or even have concepts of doors, you probably know how locked doors work. The explaining has gone way too far. But anyway, if I come over here to this door, as you can see, there is not a lock on it. But if I press square on it, we can go into the portrait room. So heading in here, we have our first example of a portrait, which this may be mean to say to the people, and just I've just started to be saying that I love this game and all of its silly, terrible graphicness. That portrait looks like it's been drawn by someone who doesn't know how to draw. It looks like I've drawn that because the proportions are way off. His head is tiny. Why is his head so small? I do not get it. 
I do understand. I don't want to mock the developers because clearly they were working with a really, really small graphic budget. But they still had to achieve something that looks semi-realistic. Anyway, I'm going to talk to this portrait, which is one of the weirdest things I'm probably going to say this episode. But, you know, magical world. Let's do this. Well, now, it's nice to see a new face and a Gryffindor, too. Good for you. I can't remember the last time I opened up. I'm a bit rusty, you see. I'm not sure I still can. However, if you can find out the correct password, I'll give it a go. Off you go, then. But be careful, there are some odd creatures about. I don't know what odd creatures he's talking about, considering the only things in this bit of the level are, like, Dumbledore and Harry here. So maybe he's talking about kids? It's like, yeah, there's some weird creatures about no portrait those are children they're supposed to be here it's a school but yeah as he was saying if we find a password we'll be able to open up that portrait that'll make more sense in a minute when i demonstrate it in a different location what i mean by that if you've never seen harry potter you'll understand in a moment but yeah i'm not going to explain how to get the passwords because that's also going to be explained in just a moment i just want to demonstrate over here this door is locked you can't go this way so you have to go this way it's basically a tutorial you're railroaded into going to the in the correct direction so that you don't get lost so coming in this door we go to the gryffindor tower which when thinking of the gryffindor tower if you know anything about harry potter you know it's on the seventh floor so you think oh i've got to go up some more stairs to get to the like get to the gryffindor common room like in the gryffindor tower nope <laughs> for some reason all of these doors are locked and you have to actually go downstairs to get to the the Gryffindor common room. So if I climb up here, as you can see, there's the Gryffindor common room down there behind that portrait. That'll make more sense in a minute, trust me. Well, I'll explain in a moment. If you haven't ever seen Harry Potter, I'll explain in a moment. But again, who hasn't seen Harry Potter? You know what I'm talking about. But this is really weird. It always caught me off guard. Like, why is the Gryffindor Tower at the bottom? Like, I know towers obviously have to have a bottom. They can start on the ground floor, but why <laughs> why do i go upstairs and then go straight back down the stairs to get to it it's very strange and then then again maybe when i go through those doors i'm actually going through like a different connecting section there's like seven flights of stairs every time i go through that door harry has to walk up seven flights of stairs god the struggles our characters go through in loading screens we complain like oh why have i got to wait it's literally our our like uh avatar having to run seven flights of stairs i'm like i'm trying i'm going as fast as i can please please i've got to run seven flights of stairs just let me breathe but anyway getting off that tangent getting back to what's actually going on in the game if i just slowly come to the edge of this banister wee! you can slide down there it's got ice physics for some reason i'm pretty certain that's just been reused from somewhere else in the game at least i know it's been used somewhere else in the game and they just felt like sticking it there is a bit of polish I always love that. It's just a random thing one of the developers decided to do. It's like, let's just put ice physics on all the slanted bits of banister for no reason. But anyway, if we come over here and talk to these two gentlemen, hello. By the look of that scar, you must be Harry Potter. I'm Fred Weasley, and this is my brother, George. Hello there, Harry. We have a proposal for you. In Hogwarts, there are special portraits, and behind these special portraits are prizes. But of course, not just anyone can open up the portraits. You need to know the password. If you bring us earwax every flavour beans, we'll tell you the password. We'll be in the Gryffindor common room, which is through the portrait of the fat lady. See you around, Harry. So there we go. That's why I do want to explain how you get the passwords for the portraits. These guys literally explain, explain it right away after we come into the next area. So... Yes, if we collect up all of those beans, specifically the yellow ones for this portrait, we'll be able to open up that portrait and get a prize. So we'll look into that later because we won't be getting any beans for a little while and not in this episode. I had to think about it a sec. There is not going to be any yellow beans or earwax beans, which is... I don't know why. I don't know why. What a weird flavour. But yeah, that's one of the two collectibles in this game. The other collectible I have to explain is if I come over here and then just explain it, this is a bookcase. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before, it's a bookcase, but in Harry Potter, if you come to one of these bookcases that's really thin and has like this brown area in front of it, if you press square, you'll open it like a door, so it's a hidden area. So in some of the areas, there are like hidden areas, did I say area enough? And if I come in here, as you can see, there is a wizard card. If I pick it up, 
it shrinks down for some reason, which is a bit weird. Merlin. So it's Merlin. I thought he was going to say a bit more, but yeah, this is the Merlin card. If I view it in the Folio Magi, I will get a bit more information, so I'll press square. And once we go through this loading screen, this is why I'm only ever going to view these once, because I don't want to have to keep opening this book. Merlin. Medieval. Dates unknown. Most famous wizard of all time. Sometimes known as Prince of the Enchanters. Part of the court of King Arthur. So there we go, this is the book where all of our cards go into, this is our second collectible. As you can see, for some reason, it's now gone back to normal size, that's a whole table underneath it. You'll see it in a minute, I'll show you where you can view these. If you don't want to view it right now, you can actually view it in another location. That is a whole table, about the size of Harry. So this card, he shrinks it down somehow, with magic that he doesn't even know. I don't even know Harry, how Harry knows this yet, since we don't have any magic. And then he resizes it again to go in this book. Also, these cards are about the size of my head. How are these convenient? I know they're wizards, but this is very strange. But anyway, let's exit out of there and go back to the loading screen. Because, yeah, I probably should have done that ramble while waiting it for it to reload. Because we're going to see this loading screen a lot. I might cut out some of them. But yeah, there we go. That is the loading screen. Let's head back through this... I was going to call it a portrait then, but this is a bookcase. If we head back through the bookcase... And then we're going to come over here and actually go through this portrait. If I come towards it, you can see this is the Gryffindor common room. If I talk to the portrait. Password. Caput Draconis. So there you go. You saw a bit like the way they've done the animations on the portraits is they're just distorting a flat image because it did like that filter thing where it like expands parts of the face but shrinks other bits. Basically, they've just stretched out the vertex of the, of the flat plane to do animation. I always find that very funny <laughs> when they do that. But yeah, so this is the Gryffindor common room. There are a bunch of things in here and a load of tutorials for me to explain and a couple of characters. So if I come over this way, I want Choose to- Choose any stamina. Grab a chocolate frog. It will give you back some energy. Okay, I wasn't intending to talk to him. I wanted to talk to the girl back there. But yeah, as you, as you just heard from this guy, those chocolate frogs bouncing up and down there. Those are, uh, they allow you to regain health. So your health bar is this like yellow lightning bolt or gold lightning bolt up in the top left hand corner. I don't know why I was pointing at the screen then. You can't see me, but I was like, yeah, this one here. This one here, right on the screen that you can't see. Oh, I talk with my hands way too much. But anyway, let's talk to him again. Try to remember where you have seen some chocolate frogs. They may come in handy when you are low on stamina. So yeah, what he's talking about there, I haven't actually checked this properly, but I believe if you pick up a chocolate frog like this, if I was to come back, that frog won't be there anymore. But it will still be there even if I leave the room and come back. So if you're ever low on health and you remember where there are some chocolate frogs, you can heal yourself. So that's something important to remember. Now I want to come over and talk to this person, which is the first person. When you drink a Wigan Wild potion, it replenishes all you have. Remarkable, isn't it? So yeah, I didn't want to talk to the first guy because but i accidentally did because his talk box was too like his collision box was way too big hers is way too big and i accidentally talked to her as well what she was telling you about is wigan well potions they full heal you it's basically a full recovery which if you find one of those always use it when you're low on life not when you've only got a little bit because yeah they can get you out of some very tight spots but yeah this is what i was talking about with trying not to interrupt characters or have them interrupt me but it just happens sometimes because their like torque collision boxes are absolutely enormous for no reason in certain places. So what I want to demonstrate here is if I come back and talk to this guy again. I've just read in the Daily Prophet that Gringotts the Wizard Bank has been broken into. I wonder who would do that? The goblins at Gringotts have claimed that nothing was stolen. I wonder what the thieves were looking for. So as you can see, if you talk to certain characters again, I didn't say this earlier when we were talking to Dumbledore because we had other things to talk about. If you talk to characters twice, or like a few times, sometimes they'll give you extra bits of information completely unrelated to what their actual purpose is. This guy's purpose is to talk about chocolate frogs, but if you talk about to him again, he'll tell you about some of the plots. So if you've watched Harry Potter or the like the film or the book, wait, watch, watch the book. If you've watched the book, you know, from a distance, sat on your shelf, you'll understand that this is a bit of plot that gets sort of cut out in this game because it just skimmed through the entire first act of the book in order to get to like 
not the interesting bit, but the bit where we can actually do a lot of exploring and have a bit more fun, let's say? I don't know. Other games have done that part, but yeah, I'm just getting off on a completely different topic. If I come over here and read this... Gringotts break-in latest. Investigations continue into the break-in at Gringotts. Rumoured to be the work of dark wizards. Gringotts goblins today insisted that nothing had been taken. The contents of the vault in question, which remain unidentified, had been withdrawn earlier that same day. So yeah, this is a bit more plot. So yeah, this is the thing. If you go around and actually explore, you can get some of the plot of Harry Potter for those who haven't seen the film. Like, that one person. I mean, if you're playing this game, I'm pretty certain you've probably seen the film. So yeah, I don't know what this is here for. It's just a bit weird. Another like little touch I like, like the banisters, is if I come over here and read the notice board. Please keep the common room tidy. I'm pretty certain that's from a character called Percy, who isn't in this game, but... You're, pr you're almost certainly thought of him when you heard that if you know anything about Harry Potter. For sale, issues 1 to 6 of The Adventures of Martin Miggs, The Mad Muggle, three sickles each. I absolutely love how... Oh, I have to press square to exit apparently. I, also, I absolutely love how this game has just little extra bits of detail in it. I just love these things. Lost. One toad. If found, please return to Neville Longbottom. Hasn't even been one day, and Neville's already lost his toad. That is just... Ah. Potions. Lesson one. Don't forget a sloth brain. Out now. The Nimbus 2000. So yeah, these are little bits of detail that if you were to actually play through the rest of the game and come back here at certain times, these would make more sense because they're bits of plot that haven't happened yet. So you can get kind of an idea. If you go out of your way to read things, look at things, you can get an idea of exactly what's coming in the game. I just wanted to show this now. I don't know if this ever changes throughout the game, but I just wanted to check it now just to demonstrate you can. You may have noticed over here, this is where you can look at your cards. I said you can look at it in another place. And this table is enormous. So I was... I was actually wrong about how big those cards are. They're not as big as my head. They're as big as my body. These things are enormous, so cumbersome. Why would anyone carry them around with them? But anyway, I'm gonna come over here now, come to this. This is where you save your game. So these books, if I open it up, it'll check my memory card, please work. And as you can see, I've already done this once before because of my failed recording. You can see that 6% is how much we've completed the game so far. So literally picking up one card, one card is enough to get 6% of the game complete, which is crazy. It's very weird, very strange, but yeah, that's probably because it does it solely on cards. So if I press start, you can see this is all of our collectibles. So we've got all the different colors of beans. There are four. You've also got spells. We don't have any at the moment. I think I mentioned that a minute ago. And also we have one out of 17 cards. So there's 17 cards in this game. So once we've collected all of them at the end of the game, there'll be something special for us. Something fabulous, excellente, in fact. Probably, maybe, some people might think that. But yeah, so if I actually come out of this, if I press X, as you can see, a puff of smoke comes out of my wand. That's to tell me I don't have any spells or I can't use any spells right now. It's because we don't know any spells and there isn't a target for spells. I'll explain this in a bit when we actually get one, but I just wanted to demonstrate that now while we still could. Because if I explained it once it comes up, it kind of, sort of, I can't explain it because we have a spell, if you get what I mean. So if I come over here and talk to these guys again, they actually have more information for us. Want to find out the password for the portrait, Harry? Well, all you have to do is bring us earwax every flavour beans. Oh, by the way, watch out for that Slytherin Draco Malfoy. He seems to be stealing things from Gryffindor students. So there we go, that's what we've got to do next. We have to go and basically hunt down Draco Malfoy because he's stolen things from Gryffindor students. And the only way we can go now is through this door to the Charms Corridor, or as I like to call it, the Tutorial Corridor, because this is where the tutorials start. Yes, that wasn't the tutorial section. This is the tutorial section. That's just me explaining things. So as I wanted to just quickly demonstrate, as you can see, this bookcase is twice as thick as the one in the other room. So you can't go through this one if I ran into it and press square. I would just climb up it. I didn't intend to show that yet, but yes, you can climb on things and jump off of things. That's what the tutorial is for. So let's come over here and abruptly end off the episode. So basically what's happened is past me has yet to realize just how long this episode is dragging on because of all the things I've explained. So what I'm going to do is cut it off here, right in the middle, 
before we get into the actual tutorial part that this game has built. What we've done so far wasn't actually the tutorial, it's just me explaining things. So what I'm going to do is cut it here, end it off, and then leave it to next time to pick up the actual tutorial. So then, until next time, like, comment, subscribe, and all the other good stuff. I've been Hasdi, and I will see you next time for the rest of the tutorials.